So R2-D2 has been a bucket list build for me. I've been working on him on and off for a while now, and this has been a really good big project to test out a lot of the different tools that I get to test out in the shop. And that got me thinking, what is the best digital fabrication style tool? Is it a 3D printer, a CNC router, or one of my favorites, a laser? Let's jump into it. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. My name is Brandon. This is still pretty early in the process, but actually got some of the lights working, so I thought this would be a good time to film it. And to kind of jump to the conclusion, there really isn't one winner. There are definitely pros and cons to the different tools that you can use. So let's talk about those different pros and cons and where one of these tools might make the most sense for one of your Project. So first off, let's talk about a CNC router. I have a couple in my shop. I have a standard X-Carve as well as a bigger X-Carve Pro. And this frame was actually cut on CNC. So this is a wooden frame that I have spray painted, not super well, white. Now CNCs are basically a router on a big gantry table. So on the pro side of things, they can work with really big material depending on the size machine that you are working with. My bigger X-Carve Pro has a four by four foot bed. So I was able to take a half sheet of plywood and lay out all my different parts and cut it out all at once. And with CNCs, especially compared to something like 3D printing, they are a lot faster to get finished parts. But for the most part, you're really not going to be able to do like really fine, intricate parts like you definitely can with 3D printing, whether you're doing FDM or especially resin 3D printing, you can get insane details with those. So this is actually a 3D carving I did on the X-Carve Pro. So you can get depth in your materials. But for the most part, they're still going to kind of be that 2.5D style. To get a real 3D object, you're going to have to get a crazy 4-axis or a 5-axis CNC. And those can get very, very expensive. And that's kind of the con on the CNC side of things. They definitely are on the pricier end, especially when you're comparing them to a budget laser or a budget 3D printer. You're really not going to get into them less than $1,000 for a machine that can put out some pretty big parts. But if you're doing a lot of builds and props and might have a lot of internal frames, CNCs are great for doing wood. You can even do aluminum. A lot of people who build R2 also use styrene and a CNC is great for that as well. So next up, let's talk about 3D printing. And actually, you don't really see a lot of 3D printed parts from the get-go. There are going to be a lot that I'm printing out right now that are going to be coming, like these pieces that are just out of PLA, and they drop in like this. And I was also playing around with my resin printer, and I was trying to see how these hollow projectors would match with this design. And I do have a few more pieces. And that actually is a really good example of the negative for 3D printing. A lot of people are going to be using material like PLA. It's pretty cheap to buy and easy to work with, but it's also pretty fragile. So I'm actually surprised this didn't crack. But 3D printing also opens you up to other materials. So I recently got the Bamboo X1 Carbon 3D printer, and it has been my absolute favorite printer. This one I actually paid for. I backed it on Kickstarter, and it has been a blast to use. So pretty much all the parts that you're seeing are ones that I have printed on there. But specifically for this printer, which will do a full review of in the future, it is a lot easier to use stronger materials. Specifically, I've been doing these ABS prints that are coming out really, really nice. And they are much stronger than PLA. They're a lot more impact resistant and much easier to work with in terms of sanding. Because with R2, there's going to be a lot of fake aluminum parts and I'm just going to be 3D printing versus what these guys are. On the pro side of things for 3D printing, you're going to be able to do much more complex designs with a lot more detail. Whether you're doing it with an extruder style printer or you're using a resin printer. Especially on the resin side of things, the amount of detail that you can get from those are pretty incredible. But for 3D printing, I definitely would say the speed isn't a pro. Doing 3D printed parts is definitely going to take a while. Now the bamboo machine is running really fast, but I've been finding you've got at least an hour, if not multiple hours, to produce these parts. And also for the most part, the machines are pretty quiet. I definitely will see people online talk about how loud 3D printing is, but when you compare that to a CNC router with a dust collector, running it's basically silent and speaking of dust collection you don't have anything really like that with 3d printing you might have a filter that's next to it to help with the fumes but you're not having to worry about exhaust or dust coming into the air it's definitely something you can have inside next to you in an enclosed room 
Now the machine that you definitely need to have an exhaust system set up is a laser. And lasers are what we have talked about the most on this channel. In fact, this is a really good overview of all the different types of lasers that are out there and the ones that you might want to use. Specifically for R2 so far, I've used it to cut out acrylic parts. And the main one being the gear that actually drives the head. So that was cut out from a couple sheets of black acrylic. Now I could do that with the CNC router, but some of the inside corners were pretty tight. And the laser, you're gonna be able to do a lot more complex shapes. Because with the router, you're really limited by the size of the router bit. So a lot of times with my X-Carve Pro, I've got a quarter inch bit on there, meaning I can't do anything that is tighter than a quarter inch. But with the laser, you really don't have that. You're just gonna have the width of the laser beam. And because of that, they can move really fast. Now with the gear, I'm using a CO2 machine, which is a lot more powerful than the diode style machines. In the past, we've talked about 20 watt diode machines that do let you cut out wood, but really practically Practically, you're not going to be going thicker than a quarter of an inch, but with CO2 machines, that power can go way up. I've got a 60 watt machine from Ohmtech that I've been using in my shop. It's got a big work area, so I can use a pretty big sheet of acrylic. And because of that increased wattage, I can run it at a pretty high speed and have a really good depth of cut. Now, the negatives with the CO2 machines really come down to the fact that it is just a laser. There really is no easy way to do 3D with lasers, so you'll definitely be sticking to flat parts. Another negative is it's going to make smoke and a lot of times, especially with diode lasers, it's going to have some pretty harmful light. So you'll need some type of exhaust system with it. A lot of times you'll need to wear glasses and with most machines now, you're going to need some type of air compressor that's going to shoot a stream of air right where the laser beam is to give you a really clean cut or engrave. Now we'll be using the lasers to actually engrave some parts in the future, especially when I'm marking on different materials. I've got a couple fiber machines that actually let me engrave directly on metal. So I'll be using that on these aluminum parts in the future. Okay, so while CNC, 3D printing, and lasers are great, you might have noticed there are several parts on this that are neither of those. They're actually all aluminum. And this is kind of a special category that I think is really unique to builds like R2-D2, is there's a lot of people that have built these in the past. They actually produce parts themselves. They'll do full parts runs where you can actually buy pieces like this. These are milled out of aluminum blocks, like this eyepiece or this hollow projector. And even this dome is a big aluminum spun piece that is actually laser cut with this crazy laser that goes all around. Now, depending on your project, you may not have had a ton of people that have built it in the past, but there's services now where you can actually get some of these parts made yourself. Services like Send, Cut, Send, or PCB Way, they make it pretty easy to upload a file, whether it's an STL or like an OBJ file that you 3D model, and then you can determine how you want it made. In my case, I've actually done this a few times and I've got aluminum pieces made. Actually, these mounts were made by PCB Way. I was able to upload my file, select the material that I wanted, and they were able to send this to me, a part that I just would not be able to produce myself. And that's definitely not limited to just aluminum pieces. There are a ton of different things that you can select. Something that I'm really interested in the future is actually doing some of my frame out of solid metal. So you can upload 2D cut files and get those sent to you as well. And full disclosure, PCB Way did send me those parts in exchange for doing this review. But I'd love to know from you guys, what tool do you see as the most versatile for your next project? Now, in my case, if I could only pick one, and if I was doing a lot of these prop style builds, it would probably be a 3D printer, just because it opens up different capabilities you just can't do with a CNC and a laser. But having those other two tools are absolutely incredible for doing things like this. Okay, stay tuned. We'll actually have some build updates about this guy in the future. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.